Hi, I'm here today talking with you guys about coming up north and to Traverse City in Leelanau County, Michigan, and what to do and where to stay and all the good stuff. You guys had tons of questions, so I thought, you know, why not? Let's sit here and chat about it. So I gathered your questions on Instagram, and so I'm just gonna quickly go through them and help answer any questions you have. If you hear a baby, it's because there's a baby in the background. Welcome to life with a little one. Um, so let's just kick off here. So somebody asked, are stores and restaurants open or closed seasonally? And I thought this was a really good question because I remember we went out to Maine and we found out it was September, but there were things already still closing at that point. So this is a really great question. Many places up here, especially outside of the downtown Traverse City area, have limited or different hours in the winter than they do in the summer. Most wineries, breweries, things like that, they will have uh, most of their times pretty consistent, but I highly suggest either calling ahead of time or just checking their website. Most of them will have them posted, what their winter hours are. Most of them are also open. There are places that aren't, such as the Cheese Shanty, uh, which is a very popular sandwich shop. There's certain spots that are like that that close down strictly for the winter. So make sure you check some of your favorite places or places that are suggested to you. <clears throat> Somebody asked, looking for some suggestions on hidden gem inland lakes to visit. This is also a great question because even in the winter, these lakes are beautiful. So the best ones are the big one, which is Lake Lulanaw. And then there's also, I one of my favorites, which is Lime Lake. And then if you go just north of here, you can go to Torch Lake, which is beautiful. Most of these boats you can also rent a boat on in the summer, and so you can drive your own pontoon boat and enjoy them. Those are definitely the, my favorites. The Long Lake is really beautiful as well, so don't discount it. Uh, it has a couple islands to explore and things like that, so it's really a lot of fun. Uh, must do's in northern Michigan in late June, our first time from PA and basing in Charlevoix. So I'm actually from Harbor Springs, which is just north of Charlevoix, and we have been up there quite a bit uh, this last summer and everything, And but we don't go up there a ton. So my, my answers aren't as good as some people would be that actually live in the area. But Charlevoix is really an awesome area, and I really suggest hanging out there. Uh, the mushroom houses are very cool to just kind of tour and see. They're a very unique thing to Charlevoix itself. But I also suggest that you head up to Harbor and Petoskey. I think Petoskey has the best downtown shopping. They have a wonderful coffee shop by Populous. They have um, Simon's General Store. They have music in the parks. They have all sorts of things. So I really suggest going to Petoskey and just kind of investing some time there. There's also some places on Walloon Lake, some restaurants out there that I would suggest. Um, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but they're very good. So I think those would be some good things to look at. They also have a great craft show and I believe that it is the week before the 4th of July. So if you're coming at the end of June, should it be perfectly in line with it? They have really awesome things going on, but hardwood's really good there. There's lots of stuff. Um, somebody asked, where could I see the inside of this cool house, which I posted on the uh, ask for story for questions, and it was on my Instagram post. Um, it's from Haiga Day, and they, they rent it on Airbnb, so you can just look it up. It's the Wayfair Tree House. You can look it up on Airbnb, or just Google it. Uh, it'll pop up, and you can see all the inside of it. Um, somebody said, I'm coming up next weekend. I know you haven't gotten much snow, but is cross-country skiing still possible? It is. Um, I think you'd want to go on groom trails such as the Vasa or Pier Stocking or the Tart Trail. Uh, we haven't. It's really icy, uh, so it's not amazing cross-country skiing. I would say it's probably better to snowshoe. Uh, that is my suggestion. And especially if you're gonna be hiking any trails, you either want ice clamps or you want uh, snowshoes on. Somebody asked, driving safe, tips for blizzards. This is so important when you come up north in the winter. Uh, you know, everyone wants all the snow, but how do you drive in it? And this is a really good question. And first of all, 
have an all-wheel drive vehicle or a four-wheel drive vehicle with snow tires or at least have the all-wheel drive. And if there's a blizzard or there's a lot of snow, make sure you have an emergency kit in the car uh, that includes all the stuff like the flashlight, um, some, some salt, um, like road salt, and a shovel, gloves, extra layers, things like that, just in case uh, you need those things. Uh, it's very important because <laughs> uh, you really can get stuck. But I would suggest sticking to main roads and because the back roads do not get cleared as quickly as the main roads do. So M22, 31, M72, uh, 204, uh, all those are 641 are all ones that you want to stay on because they're going to be cleared the fastest, the soonest, and the best. Uh, because that's where we get the most traffic and the traffic from other cars helps as well. You want to make sure you have your lights on and I would also suggest if it's nighttime, do not turn on your high beams, keep your low beams on because if you turn your high beams on, it looks like you're going uh, warp speed like Star Wars and you can't see anything. And so you gotta keep your low beams on. And I would just say drive slow be very cautious when you go through intersections and just being slow is the number one thing. And But do not freak out if you start fishtailing, you always turn into where you're fishtailing. So if that makes sense. And if there's ice, you want to veer, in, tor you want to hit a snowbank, you don't want to hit somebody else. So that's always the better thing is to get stuck in the snowbank than to go into traffic, things like that. You just want to use a lot of common sense, come into turns, but don't, when you come into a turn, you don't want to like stop and turn at the same time or accelerate and turn. Uh, you want to keep uh, all those things. They're really basic, but mainly just go slow and be cautious and keep your eye out for everyone else. Um, First, if people wanted to know about where they could stay at this amazing place, and like I said, it's from Haggis Day. And then somebody asked, what are some fun activities to do up north? I have multiple posts about this, especially for summer, because I get asked this all the time. And I have lists about kids, I have lists about weekends, 24-hour guides, everything, R right on the Fresh Exchange that you can search. If you just put in uh, Traversinian or search bar, they come up right away and pretty much everything. But if you are looking for something really unique, I highly suggest checking out uh, <clears throat> uh, My North. They have tickets for all sorts of different events and they're different all the time. So I don't always keep up on those, but because there's new ones every year, but I highly suggest if you want something that's really different and new, that's a great place. But if you, the most general things across all seasons are Go to Sleeping Bear, uh, hike, do one of the hikes out in Sleeping Bear that are open this time of year, such as Empire Bluffs or Pyramid Point. All of those are open and they're beautiful. Uh, or Sleeping Bear Point is a great one too. That one goes through the dunes. You should definitely have snowshoes though in the winter, in the very least. And the other things that you should for sure do are to hit up a few wineries or uh, cideries, Sutton Bay Ciders is great if you want a cider place or Tandem. If you want a winery, I would suggest Mavi or Bregman Brothers. Uh, those are just two really good ones that are out here on Leelanau. If you want to go on Old Mission, I would suggest Two Lads or Bryce Estates. You could also check out Bonobo has a great view at their place and it's a good place to just hang out, especially in the winter. And downtown the best part about winter is that you can actually get into some of the top restaurants so uh for instance i just made a reservation to alliance a week ahead of time of when we wanted to go and they had an open table for the night so that is not common for the summer if you want to go to alliance you might as well book it now because you won't get in unless you're going to sit at the bar and wait for three hours so it's it's definitely the best time of year to hit some of the best restaurants such as Alliance, Stella, Cook's House, things like that. So I would suggest that those places obviously to eat, at least hit one of them. Alliance is my top pick, then Cook's House, then Stella. So in terms of food, 
And then there's really unique food opportunities such as there's like the forest cooking school, there's the um, conifer does these really unique pop-up dinners. Uh, Planted Cuisine does some great stuff too at some of the local wineries. There's all sorts of unique food experiences. I would suggest if you have kids, uh, you know, the Little Fleet's awesome in the summer, but even in the winter, it's great because they have milkweed street food there. And even in the winter, they also have the yurt full of concerts. Gosh, I could go on and on, clearly. <laughs> but those are the quick answers to some of your questions that you had and you can find the full post in the links below and check it out and you can also go to the blog and see all of the content that we have there as well if you have any other questions about Travis City, i'm always happy to answer them just shoot me a dm on instagram thanks guys